Hey guys, Dr. Brad Bodle here, and welcome back to my channel where I make videos on the best natural strategies that you can use to help out with your Hashimoto's and hypothyroid symptoms. And today we're gonna to be looking at probiotics and how they can help you out with your gut and thyroid function. Specifically, we're gonna cover the connection between our thyroid and gut. We're gonna look at testing and how it should and shouldn't be used. And also we'll discuss the implementation of probiotics that way you can maximize your benefits and outcomes. And if you like these kinds of effective and holistic strategies, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also ring the bell so you're notified when I post a new video on Thursday mornings. Plus, stick with me till the end of the video if you're interested in getting more details about how you can work with me one-on-one. -on -one. But let's get started today by talking about why our thyroid health is so important to our gut and also why our gut is so important to our thyroid. As many of you know, if you've been watching me for a little while, our thyroid is what sets the metabolism for our cells in our body. And the cells that have the most metabolic demand, the ones that are running all the time, they tend to fail first when we have changes in thyroid function. This includes our guts. And if we're not producing enough thyroid hormone or if we're not utilizing it appropriately, then we can see an increase in things like food sensitivities, decreased digestive acid and enzymes, which makes it more difficult to break down foods, and also changes in microbiome and motility. The thing is, although changes in thyroid function can have a direct impact on the health of our microbiome, all those other things can also create an unfavorable environment for those microbes to grow and thrive in. This can make us more susceptible to gut infections or dysbiosis, which then perpetuates that inflammatory gut environment and can feed back and further impair our thyroid function. This means that we not only need to work to support our thyroid, but we also need to do some things to help rehabilitate that microbiome, part of which can be utilizing things like probiotics. But how can we know exactly what kind of probiotic we should take that will be both safe and effective for us? And this is where most people would suggest doing some sort of microbiome or stool testing. But I think there's a few things we should consider before investing in these kinds of tests. So to be completely transparent, it is extremely rare that I will have one of my patients go out and get a microbiome specific test. And if we are including that in our overall workup, the reasons are usually because either the person has a history of international travel, they've had food poisoning that seems to coincide with an increase in their symptoms, or we've already applied some amount of gut therapies and things aren't improving or just aren't making sense. So beyond those few reasons where we're essentially looking for an over-infection, I don't think this type of microbiome testing provides us with enough information that's useful to us for the price that they typically cost. We know that we don't have established normals and ranges for these different types of microorganisms. Also, what might be a good distribution for you might not be a good distribution for somebody else. And if we take these lab results as black and white and concrete things that we can go off of, typically it leads us down a path where we're actually less effective with our approach to these things. And here's why. If you go in and get a stool test to check the distribution of your gut bacteria, and let's say you're low on something like lactobacillus acidophilus, does that mean that that's a probiotic that you should take? Maybe, we don't actually know. Now obviously, I understand how that can be a little bit confusing. If there's a strain of bacteria that we generally regard as healthy, and your test is coming back and showing that it's low, then, it would be sensible for us to try to replace or take that bacteria in a way that it would help our overall gut environment. But that's just the thing. It's never about one strain, it's about supporting the entire environment or ecosystem of our gut. Just like it can be hazardous to introduce an animal to a new environment where it has no natural predators, the same thing goes for our gut. It's all about balance and integration. And using a test to say that we're low or high on one, two, three or more strains really misses the big picture. So just like with food sensitivity tests that we've talked about before, it would be nice if we could 
take a microbiome test and get a specific recommendation for the exact strains that we should take. But we simply don't have enough knowledge on the topic yet. And although these tests can give us a general idea of our gut health, using them as a de facto roadmap for what we should eat and what types of probiotics we should take is, in my opinion, usually a strategy to either sell a test or sell a product that goes along with that test. But, and this is the last thing that I'll say about microbiome testing, you might be asking yourself, if we don't test, then how will I know what I'm deficient in and what I have too much of? If I'm low in something, shouldn't I take a probiotic for that? And if I'm high in something, if I take more of it, won't it make me worse? But just like these kinds of tests don't know the normal ranges for you as an individual, they also give us the wrong idea about how probiotics can work therapeutically. Just like we said before, we don't want to focus on the replacement of a specific strain. We want to support the health of the environment overall. And probiotics, although many people refer to them this way, aren't a seeding mechanism. They're not a strain that you don't have and now you take that probiotic and now you have it. Instead, they actually work as a modulator and help to support reducing inflammation, reducing microbial strains that are unhealthy to you, and supporting the function of the gut as a whole. So instead of assessing probiotics on a strain by strain basis, we wanna categorize them based on the modulating effects that they can have and figuring out which one is the best fit for you. So when it comes down to it with some of this microbiome testing, my recommendation would be to, if you've done it before, use it as a reference, but if you haven't, save your money going forward, create a good plan with your nutrition and supplements, and as you implement some of these probiotics, tracking how you feel and function will be the best indicator if we're on the right track. But I know this idea that probiotics aren't something our body takes and just plugs into the spot it needs is a little bit counter to what most people hear. And using it as a modulator can be quite the shift in thinking. But let me know in the comments below if this is something new to you and if you've been using probiotics in the past with success or not. Of course, I always love to hear about your experiences and the things that you've learned. But with that said, let's move on to our final section and talk about the probiotics that I like to use with my patients and the way that we implement them. Now, real quick, before we get to that, there's a couple things that I wanted to note for you. The first is that you might be watching this and be thinking, hey, I've already tried probiotics before and it didn't really work for me or I didn't see much change. And that could be true. Probiotics might not be the thing that you need. But what I often see is that when people take probiotics, the ones that we get from our average health food store or the grocery store typically don't have therapeutic amounts of probiotics in them, or they're not the right fit for you, or sometimes there's other ingredients in there that can cause problems for us. So of course, make sure you're reading the label, and if you've tried one before, you can compare it to the dosages that I recommend here in a second to see if it's something that has enough punch to change your physiology. And the other thing that I get asked a lot is, well, I don't really wanna take supplements. Can I just do this by eating probiotic rich foods, fermented foods? And the answer to that is both yes and no. So fermented foods are a little bit unique and they have their own health properties. So if you've added them to your diet and they've helped you to feel better, great, continue to do that. However, if we're dealing with some really tricky thyroid and gut conditions, Sometimes it's better to have the probiotics that are in a supplemental form because we can control the dosage and the type of probiotics that we're giving someone in a very easy manner. This extra layer of control allows us to be much more specific and hopefully it allows us to confer better outcomes. So again, fermented foods are great if you tolerate them and there's nothing wrong taking them in conjunction with a supplemental form of probiotics. Just keep in mind that the probiotics that we get from the supplement and the probiotics that we get from the food are gonna be a little bit different and therefore we can use them in different ways. But when it comes to my patients, here's how I like to approach things. First, it's important that we understand that probiotics are grouped into three or four categories depending on who you talk to. 
And those three categories are the ones that we are going to trial to see which ones work best with you and help you to feel your best. Because at the end of the day, we all know it's about how you're functioning and how you're feeling. The three categories include, first, our lactobacillus bifidobacterium blend category, which if you go to the store and grab any random probiotic off the shelf, it's likely going to fit into this section. Next is our yeast-based probiotic called Saccharomyces boulardii. And third is our bacillus-based probiotics, which are also known as soil-based or spore-based. Even though the most common kinds of probiotics are the lactobacillus bifidobacterium blend, these days it's really easy to find companies producing all three categories. And what we want to do is get a hold of one from each category, and then we're going to trial them separately over a period of six to nine days. Whenever we add a new probiotic in, it's normal to have a little bit of bloating, a little bit of gas, and maybe some changes in bowel movements. But these should dissipate or improve for us within about 48 to 72 hours. If you take any probiotic and get significant amounts of symptoms, not only gut symptoms, but potentially things like fatigue and joint pain, then those are pretty good indicators that that probiotic doesn't fit with your system and probably isn't a good choice for you. But unless you have a prior experience with a particular type of probiotic and know you don't do well with it, you can start your probiotic trial in any order. But we'll refer to things in the same order I just discussed, which will be the bifidobacterium lactobacillus. I just, I flip those around, doesn't matter. Lactobacillus bifidobacterium blend, then the Saccharomyces boulardii, then the spore-based probiotics. So on day one, what you'll do is you'll take the lactobacillus bifidobacterium blend and 25 billion culture forming units is a great place to start. Take that dosage one time a day for two or three days. And as long as it doesn't give you any of those overt severe symptoms, then it's likely a good option for you to use therapeutically. Of course, and hopefully this goes without saying, but if you feel worse early on in the trial, so before you get to day two or three, it's okay to stop it at that time. And it likely won't get better if the symptoms are very severe. So once you notice yourself feeling poorly, feel free to discontinue and then give yourself a day or two to recover. Once you've determined yay or nay on the lactobacillus bifidobacterium blend, then you can move on to the Saccharomyces boulardii. A good starting dosage here is about 3 billion culture forming units, and you'll wanna do the exact same thing that you did on days one to three. You wanna take that Saccharomyces boulardii one time a day for three days, track your response, and determine how you feel. Finally, our last category is our bacillus, aka our spore-based, aka our soil-based probiotics, and you are going to wash, rinse, and repeat exactly as you did with the previous two categories. For our bacillus probiotics, about two billion culture forming units is a good place to start. And again, one time a day for two to three days. And by the way, the reason why I'll have some people do two days of trial and other people's three really depends on the individual and their own sensitivities and gut issues. The more sensitive someone is, the more time I like to give them and I feel like it's a bit more of a cautious approach just to make sure that nothing starts to change on those later days. But if you're someone who feels a little bit more healthy and stable, then going at it with two day intervals certainly is enough to give you some good information. Either way, once you're done with those six or nine days, then you just want to assess how you responded to each individual probiotic. If only one worked for you, then you'll want to choose that one moving forward. However, there can be a synergistic effect by using multiple probiotics, so if we can, it can be beneficial to use two or three. But using two or three is not better for us if any one of those caused issues for us previously. And the only reason I highlight that is because I know some of you out there are pretty gung-ho and you might try to force the issue just because you think, oh, if one is good and three is supposedly better, well, I'm just gonna make it happen. Don't make it happen. Listen to your body and listen to the trial that you just did. That's the whole point, is to gain information. That way you can use it in an effective manner. 
Once you have your probiotics selected, you can certainly stay at the starting dosage, but it wouldn't be unusual for me to range the lactobacillus bifidobacterium from 25 billion culture forming units all the way up to 100 billion culture forming units. Saccharomyces boulardii from 3 to 6 billion culture forming units. And the bacillus probiotic from 2 to 4 billion culture forming units. Once you have the right kinds of probiotics and have also adjusted the dosages to match your needs, then I usually have people monitor their symptoms on a monthly basis. But I like to look at things on a two month or four month window as I find that those are good times to check in and reassess things since some of this progress will take a little bit of time. One thing to keep in mind while you're going through this phase of your health journey is that even a probiotic that's helpful in the beginning may eventually reach sort of a point where it's no longer clinically useful or that it's kind of pushing things in the opposite direction where it's making things a little bit worse. One example of this would be if you are looking to improve your gut health to help reduce some of the constipation that you're experiencing. Well, it's possible that after you find that right combination of probiotics, it helps to improve your bowel regularity. But maybe you check in at four months and now your stools are getting a little bit loose and runny. Well, it doesn't mean that the probiotics are now necessarily bad. It just means that they've reached their endpoint. And you can now either reduce the dosage or ideally manage things primarily through a nutritional approach. Remember, the probiotics are there to help modulate the gut environment. And hopefully they can create a little bit of space, a little bit of room for your body to heal and your own microbes to grow and stabilize your digestive health. So if we've had a successful intervention with the probiotics that we used, and we've seen improvements in both the way our gut and thyroid are working, the final question is, do I need to take these probiotics forever? As I just referenced, sometimes probiotics can push us too far in the opposite direction. And at that point, it can be good to manage things with nutrition and lifestyle changes. And ideally, that goes for any situation. You guys have heard me say before that supplements are kind of like crutches. They should help us get back on our feet, moving in the right direction, but hopefully we don't have to take them forever. However, my caveat to that is sometimes our health history isn't what we want it to be, and having some things to support us continually can be a good thing. We just want to make sure that those supports are also being supported either by good changes on our labs or improvements in how you feel. Essentially, if you're not taking it, you notice a little bit of a dip, and when you are taking it, you feel better. We don't want to take things just to take things and because we're told that they're good for us. So if your gut is doing well and you discontinue probiotics and you continue to feel well, then that's a great indication that the probiotics have served their purpose and hopefully those other healthy lifestyle choices that you make can take over from here. But if you're someone who has dealt with chronic hypothyroidism, has very sensitive Hashimoto's or other autoimmune conditions, or if you have a history of chronic antibiotic usage, then taking a maintenance dose probiotic for the long term might not be such a bad idea. We would just want to further confirm this with changes in symptoms when you discontinue the supplement. As always, listen to your body and let it guide you in terms of what therapies are best for you and what helps you feel and function optimally. All right, you guys, I know I threw a lot at you today, but I really wanted to provide a lot of context and also not leave anything out when it comes to supporting your gut with probiotics. As I said at the beginning of the video, this is the same sort of stuff that I use with my patients, and hopefully if you were looking for a little bit more help in this area, this will guide you to be able to do just that. Of course, if you have any questions, you're always welcome to leave them for me in the comments down below. Also, if you've already been working on your gut and thyroid symptoms and still feel like you need some additional support, I encourage you to reach out and send me an email at contact at seattlethyroidhelp.com. That'll put you in touch with my staff, and if you have any questions, they'll be able to forward them my way. Also, if you want to request a free one-on-one -on -one consultation with me to see if we would be a good fit to work together, they'll be able to help facilitate that as well. Once we determine that you meet the criteria, then we'll be able to set up a time for you and I to chat, 
figure out what your health goals are, and help you create a plan where there isn't any guesswork and we make sure that you're seeing the improvements that you deserve. So if that's something that interests you, I hope that you do reach out and I look forward to chatting with you. But that's all I have for today. As always, thank you so much for being here. If you liked the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and share it with a friend or family member. If you haven't done so, check out some of my other videos. Last week's video is always conveniently placed for you on the left side, oh, that way, the left side of your screen. And if you want to, follow me on social media for daily tips, tricks, and health information. Links for both Instagram and Facebook are down below. But I hope you're having a wonderful week. I hope you're seeing lots of improvements and changes. My name is Dr. Brad Bodle. I'm always here for you guys, and I will see you next Thursday.